We've done three podcasts in a day wearing the same clothes. No one ever said anything. Okay. <laughs> that was weak. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. We were doing. We were sleeping in different room, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but we were sleeping we're... in the same bed, singing to each other. Yeah. Let's keep that off camera. <laughs> All right. Start the video before this gets worse. <clears throat> <laughs> Speaking of tension, yeah. <laughs> I'm full of it right yeah. now. Um, okay, this video we're going to talk to you a little bit about tension in your training and specifically leading into the open. But it's an endurance sport. Unless the layout changes. But if the open stays the way that it is right now, you need an engine and you need muscle endurance and you need proficiency in gymnastics to get through the stage. So if you don't develop that, you're just wasting your time. So you still do need to get stronger. You're like way off in your strength metrics. It still needs to be a prioritization, but it shouldn't be your obsession. So Max, what do we mean by tension when we say that? Yeah, I think uh, people in general misunderstand tension as a physical quality. Uh, if you need to get into a position that's really complex, like uh, you know a proper kip swing and a muscle up or the bottom of an overhead squat, there's a, a requisite degree of not just joint range that you need, but brain coordination to be able to coordinate into the pattern under load. There's a lot of experts that say, you know, the requisite movement that you need to accomplish a snatch is way higher than most people have and they probably shouldn't be snatching. And I, to, to some degree, I agree with that. Um, and people are constantly trying to reduce tension when they're tight or when they have mobility issues. And obviously, if you need to get into a position and there's too much resting muscle tension somewhere, that is true. But I think people don't understand how to manipulate tension at the appropriate times in a training slash competition setting and don't really know what it is. So sometimes you can be tight because the day before you did 150 chest to bar pull-ups and you know when you got fatigued, you're overusing your bicep and your brain creates too much sympathetic drive into the muscle, which basically uh, the degree to which your stretch reflex gets triggered is just faster. So you can have resting muscle tension as a result of just short-term training response. And you can manipulate that with uh, the training that you do, which is what we wanted to talk about. So if you're in the open, a lot of times people will want to loosen up the day before, right? So they'll go in, they'll do 20 minutes of easy stuff, they'll do some skill work, and then they'll do a, a yoga, a ramwad or something like that and they'll lower their tension. I think in this sport, you need to be a master of tension and understanding when you need it. So if you're a really tense, really stiff individual, you're probably gonna be good at power production, right? You look at a power lifter and they're tight and stiff. It's a performance enhancer. You don't want that many moving parts because then you gotta coordinate too much. But that's not so good for blood flow, uh, for energy production. You don't want to be too stiff and having to coordinate the, you know, the turning on of so much musculature. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand, hey, what's the test that's coming out? And then what do I do in the preceding day to get the appropriate tension response out of my body? So there's little things that we do. This, this gets really complicated. I think in our movement course, we have an entire like two hour section just on tension. So I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but I wanted to give a couple little tools and maybe some tips. Uh, if you know that you have a one rep max or something heavy for you coming out in a workout, something that's like a, a rel it's relatively heavy, uh, you need or you want to ramp up tension in your body as much as you can. And you probably wanna go into the day, the following day, a little bit stiff. So sometimes if you're going in, you're going to do some warm ups, and the day before you can jump on the assault bike. You can do 10 second max effort sprint bursts to really drive the nervous system and really drive tension and sympathetic drive into your nervous system so you're a little bit more tense and agitated the next day. Um, 
If you have something where you need to be really low tension, let's say it's a 20 minute AMRAP and it's wall balls. So you want like tension as low as possible. You wanna go into the workout calm, relaxed. You want your heart warmed up, but you don't want a lot of uh, pop in your step. You don't wanna be accelerating through the reps and using more energy that you can. You might wanna jump on and do like 20 minutes of easy work at, we call it EN2 effort, but like slightly, maybe like 130 beats a minute, 140 beats a minute, just getting some blood in your legs, making sure you're breathing, do some laying diaphragmatic breathing work, do some locomotion and flow and try to reduce systemic tension so that the day following you're going in with optimal blood flow and with optimal tension to maximize your performance. So I think those would probably be the two strategies that I would use on a pre-competition basis to mm -hmm. manipulate tension. Manipulating tension long-term, if you wanna be able to create uh, amazing shapes with your body, with somebody like Ido Portal or somebody in the movement culture is obviously a much more complex problem that requires long-term training intervention, but we just wanted to hammer a couple easy things in the open that you can use to your benefit to make sure that you're, you instead of always thinking that tension is bad, you can think, oh, well, tension's a performance enhancer if I need to be strong and explosive, or if I wanna make sure that I gotta hit a one rep max after doing a bunch of metabolic work, that you have the ability to understand how to draw tension up on command to be strong when you're under fatigue. So the more you're paying attention and the more you're self-aware to your body and your musculature, the better you can use your training to manipulate what you need on game day. Awesome, yeah, so we've seen different examples like in the past, um, open 16 point, no, 15.2 or 15.1, where it was uh, like a nine or seven minute AMRAP, and then it went into finding a one rep max clean and jerk. And that was like a really good way to see like who can brace under high fatigue. Yeah. And that's something that's really hard to train. Um, like what are some examples or ways that you would warm up for something like that to make sure that you can create tension while being extremely fatigued like that. Yeah, so if you were actually doing something like 15.1 and 1A that came out, yeah, so if you wanted to, the way I would warm people up for that if they were actually here, the way I warmed my athletes up that year is I have them come in and uh, I think it was power deadlifts, power snatches, and toaster bar or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I don't remember the rep scheme off the top of my head, but let's just say it was like 777 or something. So we know one round is 777. We want to make sure that the heart's warmed up in the event, but we don't want to do too many of those specific contractions. We want to do some, but I don't want them doing like 5,000 toes to bar in their warm up because then they actually might fatigue the local muscles. So I might have them jump on something like a rower, row for two or three minutes, get warmed up, jump off, do one or two rounds of the workout, depending on their fitness level. Like the elite athletes, I'll have them do two rounds. The less elite, I'll have them do like half a round twice so they get used to the transitions mm -hmm. and everything. So that way the heart rate and respiration gets a little bit elevated on the cyclical machine where there's not a lot of contraction volume that's gonna affect the workout. Mm -hmm. They get a little bit of specific practice with the stuff. And then right afterwards, I have them practice building up their clean and jerk. So, you know, they might warm it up like they would normally build their clean and jerk. So get warmed up and then they do the row, one round of the thing, then, you know, one clean and jerk or two clean and jerks at 70% of their one rep max. So they're getting a feel for, hey, my systemic tension is dropping under the fatigue of the workout, the contractions, my uh, parasympathetic nervous system is trying to engage and all of this stuff is happening that's a net reduction in your ability to produce power and tension. So I'm giving them a warm up structure that's allowing them to learn how to sequence the change in tension when they need it and how to draw up. So mm -hmm. then I have them rest and I have them do it again. And then at the next time they go up a little bit heavier. And I usually would have them do that until they got to their planned opener of the event. So they would do that. And then after they hit their planned opener, they'd strip that barbell back to where they're gonna do the workout, you know, have all their stuff set up turn the camera on and get rolling. So that's just really an effective warm up. But in the warm up, I'm basically teaching their brain how to say like, okay, this is how I turn tension on when I need it, when I'm under fatigue. Do you yeah. like that little? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, started, I, started I said, hey. Okay. <laughs> that was weak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right, continue. Good.
Well, I think that's I think that's pretty yeah, much it. That was a good ending to the video. Yeah. My uh, little tension thing. You want to say the thing about the webinar my... thing? Oh yeah. yeah. So if you haven't signed up yet, or if you haven't heard about it, we do host a weekly webinar during the open. So if you want um, to, to <laughs> it's a it's a pre-recorded. I don't know what the fuck it is. Get it out. <laughs> it's a video that you watch on your computer. <laughs> and you're going to learn pacing strategies, nutrition tips based on what we saw during the, uh, the, the elite performing the attempt live. Um, all the coaches get together, we share a bunch of ideas, and then we uh, put together some slides, and it's a cool presentation so you can get the most out of your open attempt. I said his. <laughs>